and good evening to the Sugar and Plums Kitchen on this fine Monday evening where we have the gorgeous Cicely with us Hi. tonight. Hi there, so Cicely's going to be doing a cheesecake jelly, a, no, a jelly <laughs> cheesecake cake, isn't it, yes. Cicely? It looks absolutely <laughs> amazing. You are in for an absolute treat tonight. Just a couple of things before I let Cicely loose. Uh, as you know, we have the classes on the, the we have a sale on the classes. The ones before by, uh, by March, April, we've put them on half price sale. Now John has put the banner on Facebook, and the advert does say it ends on Sunday. But he has listened to you, ladies and and gentlemen, and he is extending the sale until the end of the month. So he knows that some of you don't get payday till the last working day of the month. So he's extended the sale for you to the end of the month, so then you can grab those classes at half price. There is some amazing deals on there. So take a look at our classes online. Um, the live last night with. Claire Corbett, apparently there was a bit of a mare going on when she was trying to take some macarons off the baking parchment and uh, we've come in this morning and Carol said to tell you it was a bit like the Swiss meringue moment where it was patience that was needed. We've come in this morning, this paper is absolutely fine for your macarons, just wait for them to cool. They hadn't cooled completely. So they weren't coming off the parchment, and you well they've been left on the side tonight, and we've come in. I went, oh, what well, they come off? And they're the bottom, man. Absolutely oh, yeah. fine. So what it is is just have patience and make sure if they don't come off, they aren't cool enough, and just make sure you leave them to cool completely. So they're absolutely great. So there's some spare macarons that we might be munching a bit tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I put these. Oh, can I just have you put those yes. down there for me? Thank mm -hmm. you. And then for those who saw the live today my mammoth chocolate live I did one thing I forgot to do somebody asked me would I cut a cake pop chocolate in half to show you the inside but it's how we've done all the dusting and all the painting I completely forgot said goodbye to you all cameras turned off I went we never cut it so here we go I put it up there so there you go there's your cake pop chocolate heart so as you can see it's a lovely coating of chocolate it's got the cake pop inside which have been which a vanilla sponge mixed with some lovely vanilla buttercream and it's in there and that is a gorgeous chocolate ready to eat so you can still catch the live on Facebook I'm just typing your face up there <laughs> you can catch a live on Facebook and you also can catch it on YouTube so we're in for a real good treat today aren't we <laughs> we have Ellie in the kitchen Hiya. hello and we also have another little special guest in the kitchen we have Cicely's daughter, Trixie, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Would Trixie like to come and say hello with your mum? So I'm going to leave you out of the way so you can introduce Trixie, okay? Come on then, baby. You come round here to your mum. There's a good girl. And you say a quick hello to all our lovely viewers and make sure you smile and wave to them. Hello. <laughs> Are you happy to be at Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen? Yeah. No. <laughs> you said yes, didn't you? You said yes. So. <laughs> I think we've got a little giddy kipper here, haven't we? Yeah, she's very excited. But you've promised to be very quiet whilst Mummy's working, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to wave goodbye to everyone. So everyone shout, everyone shouting hello to you, Trixie. They're all shouting hi, Trixie. And she's just like a mum. You're right, Jenny. She's not shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Daddy, no, no, no. Say night, Daddy. Night, Daddy. Because I bet Daddy's watching. Night, Daddy. Right, let's go back to Nanny then. Go back to Nanny then. Oh, well done. <laughs> so, Little star. We'll see. So we've got a great she audience watching quiet. already, Cicely. Have we've got we? a fantastic audience watching already. Everyone's shouting. Um, everyone's shouting. It, it, oh, it is Thursday. Did I say? Did I say? Did I say Monday? I've no <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Yes, I'm so. Yeah, welcome to the Thursday night live. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Ready for Monday. Oh, so they've they've all they all say it's a little beauty they love her mm. and they're all excited about this jelly cheesecake cake yeah well hopefully it turns out all right so over to you yeah so uh... <laughs> 
The recipe <laughs> is on the website, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm going to do first is I've just poured in 50 millilitres of just normal cold tap water into 15 grams of gelatin. So, I'm going to do that first, give that a quick stir so that can bloom because we want to leave that to sit for a minute while we do other things and soak it all up. Move that over there. So, first of all, should we start with the cake or the well, frosting? No, well, what frosting? I think you should do is, because of the recipe, how we've done it, tell them what size cake we've made. That would probably help, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, I made two six-inch cakes that I trimmed down slightly to like five and a half inches, which I have over here. Can you just go and get them just to show them, yeah? So uh, you used our recipe, didn't you, on the basic sponge mixture. So it was two six inch cakes. Each cake was the 150 grams of self-raising flour, 150 grams of margarine, and 150 grams of natural flavoured icing sugar, along with three eggs. And you made two of those size cakes, didn't you? Yeah. So, I've used the like the five and a half inch cutter out of the circle cutter set just to trim off these edges and just make it nice and smooth. And one thing we also found is when we attempted the cake with the crust alone, the frosting just didn't want to stick to it very well. Right. So we found with the edges not being on, it's a lot better. So Karen's, Karen's asking, is that powdered gelatin rather than leaves? Yeah, this is just powdered gelatin. There's one. Then we're going to do this one. This one's a little bit of a crazy one, but if you stay with me guys, it works. <laughs> I'm just thinking about me and you writing the recipe oh, up before. Yeah. It was, and, and you know, now I'm watching you do it, it's great. <laughs> It's all going to make sense now. <laughs> I came in and I was just waffling on about the recipe to Karen and she just had no idea what I was saying or talking about. Did you see that? Did you see that blank look? Yeah. <laughs> so how, how much gelatin was it that you put into your water to bloom? So it was 15 grams and I used 50 millilitres of water. And that was cold? Or just the door. Yeah, just cold tap water. And this is to make the cheesecake frosting. Yes, it is. Um, because it's got to be left to set for a minute to bloom. So I thought, pour that in first, whilst we do this bit, and then it'll be ready in time. So there's our little layers cut now which look great. So I'm going to just stack these up over here da -da. <laughs> and move these slightly out of the way into the corner. So they're just the trimmed cakes. I'll just get you a bowl for your off cuts there. Thank you. We'll give them to the birds tomorrow. There you go. Thank you. Bet the birds love it here. <laughs> We've got some very rotund portly birds in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> I think they must tell all the mates because Carol's garden's always full of birds, so I think they all tell the mates where they can get a good feed <laughs> from. So, um, Claire saying she thinks it would work the same with agar. Would it? See, it would, but you would just have to change the ratios. I'm not 100% sure what it would be with agar. Um, so I suppose you would have to work out what the equivalent of this amount in agar would be, which I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah, it would work the same. And Bald Baker, Bald Baker Paul said, it's lovely to see you back, Cicely. Thank you. It's lovely to be back. I always enjoy coming. So, so you've trimmed your cakes. We've trimmed the cakes. You've now dissolved your gelatin in your cold water. Yeah. You have it there. 
And I'm just going to, now, I'm just going to put this into the microwave for 10 seconds to bring it back to a liquid form. Okay? <laughs> So that's just for 10 seconds, is it going yeah. into the microwave? So if you want to put into our recipe, uh, on our recipe site, which is www.sugarandcrumbsmixingitup.co.uk and put in jelly cheesecake cake, the full recipe of Sicily's will appear there for you. So now we're just back to having some liquid gelatin. Nice and mixed. I'm going to move this over here for a second. We're going to tip in 405 grams of mascarpone, which is a type of soft cheese that you would use in cheesecakes and things like that. I've left it out for not long, about 20 minutes, half an hour, just to soften it a little bit. Otherwise, it's a little bit of a brick if you bring it straight from the fridge. So I'm just going to soften this up. That looks lovely, soft and creamy, that doesn't it? Yes. See, I know everyone's got all their different, like, ways that they would make cheesecake but I always use mascarpone for mine because it makes it have that really like thick creamy texture I think. Nice and smooth. If I ever start just waffling on about the recipe <laughs> no, just right. tell me. I've I, got it all everything in front of me here. If I stuck. ever lose you. Yeah. And you, you don't know what I'm talking about right. anymore. So at the moment, just in that bowl there, we have 405 grams of mascarpone cheese. Yes. Which is getting nice and smooth. Okay, and now I'm going to add the yoghurt, which is... The yoghurt is 240 grams of unsweetened yoghurt drained. Drained, now, What yes. do you mean by drained, please? So this one that I bought is actually not too bad. Um... Oh, it's alright, it's like when she asked me for the kitchen roll before. She said, Have you got any kitchen towels? I said, What about oh, that big right roll in front, front of, of me? <laughs> right, so when you buy yogurt, um, sometimes you get that like liquid that sits across the top. See, this one that I've bought hasn't actually really got any, but the one that I used yesterday when I was working on this recipe was like a low fat yogurt and that came with like a thick layer of the like it's like water isn't it like cloudy water so if you the yogurt that you buy has got cloudy water just tip just gently tip out that bit of cloudy water and that's all it means when i say to drain it that's it it, it sounds confusing <laughs> but it's not and how much was we doing of this you one again? Do 240 grams I think this one's run out of batteries. <laughs> you chose the one, did you? you ch <laughs> I've been using this one the whole time I've been here to weigh up my ingredients. Here we go. And then, as soon as it gets to the live, it dies. Oh, isn't that the way? So, 240. Yes. That's, that's on, that's, per that's working perfectly fine. It's saying, this is what's doing, it's what's saying, ow. No, that's working fine as well now. I'm just, just wait for it to go. They're working. See, what's that saying? <laughs> broken it. You, you have, what have you done to my scales? You can just... Oh, 
There you go. You this Here one's working. Come. There you go. Right, so now I'm going to print. I think it was probably a little bit unstable on the board. Probably. So, I'm going to just tip in some of this. So 240 grams there you want. Perfect. Yeah, if you had anything else, I would suggest us getting another empty bowl and putting your products on there. The bowl's getting too heavy for the scales. Oh, yeah, that's probably what it is. So yeah. then what you need to do is put an empty bowl on the scales, reset it, and then put your product into that yeah. bowl and then tip it into that one. The rest is all weighed up anyway. It's just the yoghurt I left to talk about the... Um, the drains. Yeah, the drain and the piece of yoghurt. Piece of yogurt. Well, it, the piece of you, yogurt? You, you got me with that, didn't you? And it is yeah. na it's natural, unsweetened yogurt pat. Yeah, just un like unflavoured, like natural Greek yogurt type of thing. And I'm going to mix this in just till it's nice and combined. And full pat is always better. Yes. See, I, the, when I had used the like the low fat one yesterday, it had loads of that yeah. water stuff on the top. That looks lovely. Mm -hmm. People are loving this. They want to. They they uh, they can't wait to see the finished products because they think it looks great for a barbecue. And it looks yes. a really lovely summery dessert. I loved making this one. The only thing was, was trying to get it here in this heat. Luckily though, it's been quite cooler today, hasn't it? Right, so. Not here, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so is your gelatin still okay there? Yeah, that's fine. So I'm just gonna add in the, this is velvet vanilla icing sugar. And it's 145 grams. 145 grams. Mixing all of this. So Dinaz is asking, will this stay in the heat? So is it best is it a, is it is it best to keep in the fridge until you're ready to serve? Yeah, I would keep this in the fridge until you're ready to have it. With it being like cream and like the cheese and yogurt it's all stuff that could curdle if you le left it out in the heat um because i think this would be a lot nicer served cold as well right so that is all combined and it's nice and creamy so i'm just going to grab a fork So at the moment in that bowl is 405 grams of mascarpone cheese, 240 grams of unsweetened yogurt, 145 grams of sugar and crumbs velvet vanilla natural flavoured icing sugar and in another bowl we have 15 grams of gelatin which has been mixed with 50 mils of cold water. Yeah. And you have one final ingredient. Yeah. So I'm just going to drop in some of this cream mixture. And get a fork and I'm gonna now tell them how you feel now because this is what got me wasn't it yeah so I'm gonna <laughs> whisk up this with some of the um I'm gonna whisk up the gelatin with some of the cream mixture in it because if you add it in hot the whole thing will just like go really gross and curdle this looks kind of curdled but it's not. And all the little bit of gelatin's gonna do is just stabilize it a tiny bit. So it's just gonna hold better on the cake because it is quite a runny mixture. So uh, Alison's asking, do you think it would work with dairy-free alternatives like soya yogurt, fractose-free cream cheese? Well, I'm not too sure about that actually. Um, Possibly, yeah. I don't. I don't really see. I don't see why, why it wouldn't work. No, myself. I don't see why not. So I have got. Where 
did we put the mixer? In we have the mixer. So I just want to plug it in there. Just want yeah. to give it that. that. Just pull it out. There we go. Does it get there? Oh, oh yeah, there we go. It's a Bosch one. I thought it was just a really short no, wire. No, I thought, no, how no. am I going to do that all the way over there? <laughs> so I have the whipped cream. Well, I know, sorry, I have the double cream and I only want it to be half whipped. So it's getting thick, but it's not like peaking. So, and this is 270 mil Five. 275 <laughs> milliliters. I just think you, you make me laugh. You say to me, have some bowls. You didn't tell me what, and then you've chosen the smallest <laughs> bowl as possible to whip your cream. <laughs> Just proving that you can do it in a small bowl. Yeah, because some people only have small bowls. Yeah, I'm just proving That's that you can make it work yeah. with what you've got. So, Dinaz, I can repeat the ingredients for you. It is on the website already on our Sugar and Crumbs Mixing It Up recipe website. Um, it's under Jelly Cheesecake Cake. But the cheesecake frosting recipe is 405 grams of mascarpone cheese, 240 grams of unsweetened yogurt. 145 grams of sugar and crumbs, velvet vanilla, natural flavoured icing sugar. Uh, in a separate bowl, Cicely mixed 15 grams of gelatin and 50 mils of cold water together. And then she's added that to she's added that to the, the mix, uh, mixed a little bit at a time so it didn't go curdly. And then she's just half whipped 275 grams of double cream and she's now added that to the bowl. Yeah, and I'm just dirtying every single spatula. <laughs> That I got out to use. That's fine. We've We're got plenty more. We've got plenty more. So I'm gonna fold that in. And they're all saying if they'd whipped cream in that small bowl, they all would have been wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she uses the biggest bowl at home, does she? To, because you're washing up. <laughs> <laughs> Trix is waving at me. <laughs> so this is just giving it a really good mix round, are you, Cicely? Yes. That mixer we've got there is a a dual a, a dual it dual it. It's a really good. It's a really nice heavy mixer, and it's great because you can just wind in the uh, wind in the cords, so there's no uh, no cords hanging around. It's absolutely great. So Babs is saying, do you think that um, vegetarian gelatine would be okay? That's the agar, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Agar is the veg vegetarian gelatin so the next part is where if I'm gonna lose you I'm gonna lose you here because this is where I'm gonna confuse everybody so I have over here my board which I prepared but I'm gonna show you what I did with it because um, Karen just had no idea what I was talking about So they're saying hello Simon too. They didn't realise you was on camera so until they heard your lovely voice. Oh, okay. Yes, you didn't announce me, did you? What were you thinking, Karen? <laughs> Leaving just, you out. I'm just such a bad person. Right, so Right, so this is this is the part that got me, <laughs> Cicely, yes. So we have the board underneath, and then I've got two pieces of cling film, one on either side so that it's joint like overlapped in the middle. And then it's really important that you don't put the board on top of the cling film because if you put it on top of the cling film, once we get to the jelly stage, your jelly is going to float. It, the whole cake is just going to float because the board is what's going to make it like really buoyant and it's just going to make it pop off the board and float up in the jelly. So you want your two pieces on top of the board. It doesn't matter what board you're using because at the end when the jelly's set and we take it off, we can transfer it onto a nicer board or... Um, whatever you want to use so if I lift it up you can see there's just two pieces of cling film that I've overlapped in the middle on top of a board and then I've got the six inch ring cutter out of the ring cutter set in the middle and Carol is trying to get hold of some of these. As she said, PME are out of stock at the moment. Mm -hmm. All to do with the Suez Canal and the, the ships and everything gets stuck at Felixstowe. Folkstone, yeah. not Felix, at Folkstone. So she's trying, desperately trying to get some of those cutters in for you. But they're definitely worth waiting on. I love mine. It's the, one of the best things I've got. And then inside that, I'm going to put the six inch ganache kit. 
this way. So I'm going to use the ganache kit pretty much the same way that you would anyway, but instead of putting a layer at the bottom to make the bottom the top, we're going to put bear cake in first. And the bear cake is going to suction into the cling film and then that's going to help it all just stay put when we get to the jelly layer so we don't get a floaty cake. So, is there any questions about my board? No, it, it's, is it making sense? It's making sense, it is. So far, yes, because I did like five practice runs of this exact cake and every time went completely wrong and it was all in the cling film. So if you get the cling film wrong, that's when your jelly's gonna pour out the side and everything's gonna go wrong. So just make sure that you've got the cling film right. So down here I've got just my chopping board. And I'm just gonna cut up a few strawberries just to put inside the layers with some cream. Just so it's extra nice and pretty. And also it's very healthy. It's yeah, got very fruit healthy. In it. Very healthy. So I'm gonna have some strawberries. I'm gonna Put the tops off. That looks a delicious bowl of fruit, that. Oh, it is. Mm -mm -mm -mm. My lovely prepared fruit. We're just going to chop up some nice slices. Am I on camera, all right, Simon? Fine, yes. Yeah. I didn't even check them before I started cutting <laughs> it if I was even on camera. <laughs> some more well obviously with yours you can use whatever fruit you want it's just whatever you want to do with it really it's your favorite isn't it? it's, it's, yeah. it's whatever fruits you fancy yeah and whatever's available in your local shops at that time yeah so i'm gonna do some just a few grapes. We're all right on this board. I allow chopping on this small grey board. I double check. <laughs> you, you did, did you made me laugh. You kind of cut on this one. I went, yeah, go on then. <laughs> yeah. No, we allow chopping on this one. It's just my big boards that I don't allow sharp knives near. <laughs> so, that is just a little bit of fruit cut up just to go in between some layers. Let me move my fruit down this way because I'm running out of space. So just, I've packed the entire kitchen. This was clear when you came in before. I know, it'll be clear <laughs> when I leave. Right, so I'm gonna get the piping bag. So we can start piping a little bit in. I can't wait to see all this come together. Yeah, it, it does come together. It just, it looks a bit wacky, but it does make sense in the end. So I'm just gonna put some of this in here. Yep, so um, you are using the Bridget's cake room ganaching kit, aren't you, my dear? I am indeed, and I'll be using the ganache kit for the cheesecake layer and the jelly layer. So, there's two more ways that we can use it. I hope we have to, ladies, we'll have to get our vocal cords going in a bit, and Simon, we have a birthday. It's Lorraine's birthday today. Mm. So we need to have a sing song in a bit for Lorraine. I know the birthday's there so I can make a note. Trixie's is next week. Isn't it, sweetheart? Well, you'll have to, you'll have to tune in next yeah. week and let us On know, Wednesday, will you? Yeah. yeah. Some scissors we need. Karen asked me before we went live, what do you need? Do you need any of these things? And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> and as soon as I go live, I'm like, well, actually, I need all of it. <laughs> So. Oh, and it's, is it your birthday today as well, Anne? So you're just squeezing that down the side there, are you? Yeah, I'm just getting it all down all the sides, making sure that it's going all the way to the bottom, because we want a nice even layer. Now, I'm going to put some 
on top of there. And I'm going to get my spatula from here. Oh, my mum's just told me from over that side that there's a gap, what, here? Yeah. Can you believe Anne Meach was telling Fibs it's not even her birthday? <laughs> <laughs> She's just saying it's my birthday today and they're all saying you big fat fibber. It's and in April. Say, is it in April, is it? I don't know. It, those, they love you singing, Sam. It was your, your lovely dulcet tones that come over. Can't be mine. <laughs> Tone death me. <laughs> that looks so creamy and nice. It really is creamy. It's lovely. But because we've done so many practice runs um, at home for this cake, it means that we've had so many of these cakes. <laughs> like every day there's been one of these cakes like floating wonky or not right and then it's alright. We've had them anyway. The so I'm just putting some of the strawberries that I cut up in here. And Meecha, you are a little tink. <laughs> <laughs> She's saying that Anne's also saying it looks gorgeous already. It really does. It looks so... Oh. Very you know, like you just put a knife through it and have a slice. So you literally just fill in this as if you would with the buttercream or the ganache. So you're just making sure that you push it all down the sides. The only difference with this is that it's just a little bit more soft. So you just have to be a little bit more cautious with it, that's all, when you're peeling the ganache kit off. Yeah, it's nice and creamy, isn't it? So it's, it's filling up really nicely around the sides with yeah, it being so nice and very creamy. creamy. Yeah. But I think that's what, what I was drawn to, was something really summery and warm. So, uh, yeah, Breda, these well. are actually five and a half inch sponges. Where Cicely baked a six inch cake and then she used the five and a half inch ring cutter at the PME set just to trim the outside off. So they're actually five and a half inches inside the sponges. That's nice and covered, I think, on the outside. And then, I <laughs> think my piping bag keeps making a funny noise. <laughs> and then I'm going to just go around the middle and then use my spatula. And we're just going to keep repeating the process until we've done the whole cake. There's a little gap on this side here. Got it in one. <laughs> got it. We got it. You got it. We're gonna put some grapes on this one. Nice cold grapes. I think these are the black grapes. Because when I went to the shop to get the fruit, I was trying to think of like what colours would be nice. Well, you can't go wrong with grapes, strawberries and cherries, can you? And nice. blueberries. Oh. And raspberries. Bit of everything. Oh, we've got some orange and some oh. kiwi. We have got a lot going on in here. So, we are going to put this one in next. Jenny Moorwood's laughing. She says, oh dear, it looks like I'm going to have to make a bigger one. I've only got the seven inch kit. Oh. But you know what? That look really excellent. Was your first one a big one, was it? Yeah, well, <laughs> the first try was like an eight inch. But then, because you've got to think is once you put the jelly on, is you're putting on like a whole other layer of size. So if you're starting off with like an eight inch, that's perfectly fine. But beware that you might be taking it up to like a nine or a ten inch once you put the fruit and the jelly on. Yes. Which is why we went for a six, because we used a six inch kit, but then we had to use the eight inch kit with a liner for the jelly layer because we tried to use a seven inch kit but because we've got the strawberries and things like that is it stuck out too far so you could use just like a really big piping bag but 
um, because it's because of how like creamy it is I don't want it to melt in my hands so I'd rather just like keep re refilling the bag every few minutes all right I'm gonna push it down again into the gap <laughs> using the camera to see what I'm doing Quite amused. So what Google is saying, noises. a lot of people are asking about the agar agar, mm -hmm. and what Google is saying here is a one-to-one -one ratio. So powdered agar agar is usually easiest to use as it can be substituted for gelatin in a one-to-one -one ratio. No. Oh. So one teaspoon of gelatin, so one teaspoon or about three grams of gelatin is equivalent to one teaspoon or two grams of agar agar. Oh. So they are saying one to one ratio. So you can ask yeah, Mr. It's Google. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Well, if anyone tries it, I'd love to know how it turns out because it's always good to know how to make it, you know, without the gelatin because not everyone can eat meat products or things like that. Lots of strawberries again, and then my last layer, chucking on the top. See how fast was this with the kit? And because if you look, you can see how soft and creamy this frosting is. If you didn't have the ganache kit, I don't think you'd be able to get it round the cake and set without it kind of like running off the sides. I'm making such a mess of my hands. I'll give you cloths. I know, I'm going <laughs> to use it in a second. I'm just no point wiping my hands to pick up the messy piping bag again. It looks so delicious, that frosting. It really does. Mm -hmm. And it just tastes, because I've got the velvet vanilla in it, Yeah. to me it just tastes like um, vanilla cheesecake. Oh, yum, which is yum. so good and what you could also do is use this exact same recipe is an idea that came to my mind in the car on the way here is use this exact same recipe for this frosting but with a cheesecake bottom and make it into a cheesecake and then the idea that I came up with in the car was put your fruit and jelly mixture in one of the moulds the same moulds that you use to make your hot chocolate bombs then you could make a mini cheesecake and then put the jelly and fruit dome on the, on top. the top. Which I would show you, but I only thought about this in the car on yeah. the way here. And you haven't so. got a gap on this side. Where? Just that, that's it, just down near that line. I don't want your cake to be ruined. Have I got any at the front? I'm like looking. I don't think so. I think that is it. That looks absolutely great. Yeah, it's a little bit of a messy one, <laughs> but it's so worth it. And just put a nice thick layer on the top. So this is what I meant by the way, when you use the ganache kit with ganache or sometimes with the buttercream, you can make the bottom the top by putting a layer underneath, but I'm just doing it. The, like the traditional way. Like right Wales. Yeah. So yeah. like Jackie says, what another great use for the ganache kit. Yes. Wait till I show you the unveiling of the jelly. <laughs> 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 I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> <sighs> so, we're now just going to get these parts of the cling film and just super gently just stick them up just so they don't get tugged at or anything. Just to keep it nice and protect protected. And then that is going to go in the freezer for at least three hours so it can get nice and hard. So we're just going to have a coffee now and <laughs> no, we're wait not. three hours. <laughs> we're not doing a live like last so night. This one <laughs> out of you. <laughs> No, I'm going to make, right, I'm going to show them how to make the jelly because the jelly has also got to sit at room temperature for two hours. 
So we're going to be here to midnight tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now tell them the truth. You've been making yeah. things all night, haven't you? Yeah. And let's see, you've, you've come in with so many things prepped in stages. It's been like a blue pizza moment. The amount of cool box, the cool box and all the ice blocks that you buy to keep everything cold was crazy. Like we had to get all these cakes here and all the fruit and the cream and stuff without anything going off in this heat. I'm quite impressed with myself, to be honest. <laughs> Getting it all here, <laughs> intact. Could we take, Dinez is saying, could we take this jelly to the park? I mean, is it, could, is it something we would take to the park? I mean, you're thinking, you Aus yeah, but Australia's like 42 degrees. Not there. No. Not there. You can't take it to your park. <laughs> oh, no, Dinez is, 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 is in California. Not yeah, we, yeah we, it is 42, it's in, Dinez is in California, so it's... Um, yeah, so one of our practice runs, we did leave it on the side for about an hour and it was still okay. But any longer than that, I wouldn't really because the jelly's going to start to want to collapse. Um, if, you know, if it was a different time of the year, if you want to make this like near Christmas, then you could probably get away with it for a lot longer if you've got a cold house. But I think because of the cream and all of the creaminess that's in it, I think it would put me off leaving it out for too long because you just don't want anything to curdle and... You don't just want a big yeah. mouthful of curdled cream, do you? But no, if you've got a cool bag, um, but again, yeah, you'd be taking it to somewhere and then eating it straight away, like if you was going to a dinner party or visiting family, then you could take it in a cool bag, um, like the ones that you get from the shops, don't you, to put your frozen shopping in? Yeah, but you with also... With the silver lining. I mean, a lot of people, are, like, especially over in America, mm -hmm. they have the cool boxes. It would be great if it was in a cool box. If you've box. got a cool box, that's yeah. great. But if not, one of the cool bags would work yeah. with some of the, like, the ice cube blocks, which are cheap enough to buy. How much did I just pay yesterday? £2.50 for, like, eight yeah. small ones that go in the freezer, so... Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I mean, Janelle's, I mean, you're looking for a case to take the park. If you could, you have big cool boxes over there and like your, your ice blocks or your ice cubes, it'd be a perfect cake to take. Just make sure the ice cubes don't, just make sure nothing touches the cake, that the cake's still protected. So. What we're doing now. The next part is, we're going to bloom some gelatin again, and then we're going to sort out the fruit to decorate because... As soon as you get the cake out of the freezer, you want to take the ganache kit off, get the fruit on and get it back in the fridge. So last night when we was doing this, because yesterday was such a hot day, wasn't it? it there was me and my mum just sticking fruit to it and chucking it back in the fridge as quick as we could. <laughs> so you want to be quite quick with it because of the heat at the minute. You've got less working time. So I did just get a bowl. I was thinking you did. I did get a bowl <laughs> over here. Turn this on, and then I need 65 grams of gelatin. And this is just my massive box of gelatin I brought from home. It's a bit bizarre, isn't it? See this much gelatin in one place. <laughs> well, if you've been practicing your kit, you've been using quite a lot. We have you? been using a lot. And my local shop sells it in like 50 gram sachets yeah. rather than the usual like 7 grams or 12 oh, grams. That's great. So this is going to be 65 grams. I'm trying to be really careful not to go straight over. There you go, 65 grams. Spot on. Well, no, actually, it's 66, but <laughs> that one gram isn't going to make a massive difference, is it? And then, I'm using just some flavoured water. So you could use flavourings, like the dropper-type ones, if you wanted to give it a flavour, or natural flavourings. But I just thought it was a lot easier and simpler to just use a flavoured still water. Um... We did make it with the sugar and crumbs icing sugar, but obviously icing sugar makes it go cloudy and it just, you can't get the cloudiness to go away. But it was still delicious. We made raspberry ripple and we had it with ice cream and it was lovely. Um, okay. So if you want, but if you wanted to go for like a cloudy look, if you wanted to like 
put some food colouring in and then just have like a plain cake with like a nice clouded like cover on it then that's fine so I'm going to put in 375 millilitres of the flavoured water just cold No, there's no blue. That, there's no blue powder in there, Denise. It's the bottom of the bowl. It's our plastic bowl. We have a. There's like a. It's a, a fancy bowl with like a blue non-slip bit on it on the bottom. Oh. You alright there? Yeah, I couldn't open <laughs> it. A bit more. So in this bowl at the moment, it's just 65 grams of powdered gelatin, and there's going to be 375 mils of cold flavored water. There you go. Bang on. 375 are just the plain flavoured water. Go get another one. I can't believe how dirty every spatula you gave me. Every single one. I know, you gave me about five. I don't know how I've used that many. <laughs> so, and we're just going to let this sit just for about five, ten minutes, but we need to prepare the fruit anyway. So, what do you mean when you want to leave it to bloom? So, to leave it to bloom means that the gelatin is just going to suck up all this water. So I'll show you what I mean once it's done. So it'll suck up all the water and it'll probably go a little bit like white speckly because it's taken up as much of the water as it can. A little bit like rice or pasta really, like it just sucks up all the water. So I'm going to leave that to stand for a minute and then when we come back to it you'll see what I mean. And then we can start... The fruit, yeah, the fruit. So you've used still flavoured water, you've used lemon and lime there, haven't you? Still flavoured water. Yes, or you, they, they do like summer fruit ones is what yeah. I used last time, or they have all different flavours, don't they? Yeah. So depending on what you want to put in it. So not carbonated, ladies, it's a still one. Back with your board. Back with my board. Back with your board. I feel like I'm just back and forth, back and forth. So, before we went live, I pre-cut some oranges and kiwis because they're so, like, liquidy, like, they're so juicy inside that you want them to dry out a tiny bit just so you can get it to stick to the frosting, which is here. And then I've just gently laid them on a bit of tissue paper yeah, that's already taken some of the liquid out of it. And then I'm going to get my box of fruit back. And then I've got my cherries, which I have left. I've left my cherries on the little stalks. Because I'm going to put the cherries around the top of the cake. That are going to be like sticking out of the top. But the... Um, the things that are going to be on the side, like the strawberries and the oranges and stuff, and make sure to cut the edges off. You can leave them on if you want the look, but I just don't like the idea of trying to fish a peel out of my jelly. Oh, no, yeah. absolutely not. Could you use um, pop or prosecco if yeah. you wanted to, rather than just using still water? Yes, because I know this would work because my cellophane recipe yes. um, was made using lemonade, and that worked absolutely fine so yeah that should work perfect i don't see why it would have you have, have you used kiwis on all your practice cakes hmm? have you used kiwis on your practice cakes when you've been practicing um some of them yeah yeah because Most it's, only, of them, it's yeah. Only, it's only because um somebody's just put on their door and said kiwis don't work in jelly the enzyme breaks down the gelatin well, it depends how long you're going to leave it before you eat it. I'm pretty speedy. <laughs> Is it once it's done, I'm going to slice it. So, but, um, I did not know that, actually. But I suppose that's good to know if you wanted to make it in advance for something yes. and leave it in the fridge. I haven't had an issue with my kiwi, as far as I know. So I'm going to just cut up some strawberries So again. you're just cutting these in half, then, are you, the strawberries? Yeah. And they're all like the idea of using prosecco mm, rather than still water. Lovely. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why you couldn't. I love strawberries. 
uh, uh, Bold Baker Paul's asking, could we drop some edible glitter in the jelly or would you, would that sink, do you reckon, if you put... The edible glitter floats. Um, I used one some in my practice run. Don't get me wrong, it looked absolutely beautiful. It was not an issue, but it did... Um, it did float a little bit and then we ended up with like a golden layer around the top. It still looked really pretty though. But one thing that I have done in the, and what I will do in this one, is I tossed my blueberries in a little bit of gold powder. Oh, oh nice. Just so you've got like a little bit of a pop yes. somewhere. Um, which I'll do again today. And then when we unveil it out of the ganache kit, you'll be able to see how that worked. I think it stayed on pretty well, actually. So, what else do I have? I have lots of raspberries. So, it's actually quite amusing because when I was buying the raspberries, they had, I think these ones were called the wonky raspberries from Aldi but then there are other raspberries that weren't wonky raspberries but a completely different colour so these ones are quite like a pinky red and the other ones were really dark red weren't they mum and I don't understand why the raspberries were different colours I don't really understand that like if anyone knows why the raspberries were different colours like what about the wonky ones do you know what's the reason they colour change. They colour change. Mm -hmm. That's Thank what you. I thought. Yeah. Thank Great. you. Thank you. They colour change, Trixie <laughs> says. That is why. They might be grown in a different country and different soil. Yeah, maybe. And a slightly different variety. I don't know. If anyone else has been to Aldi and noticed this. I have. Have you noticed it? I noticed it, yes. You did notice it. See, it's not just me that's noticing the colour of the raspberries. Why were they so different in colour? Or Lorraine's thinking of a lemon drizzle flavoured icing sugar in the frosting. Yes. And gin and gin and tonic, uh, gin and lemonade for the jelly. Yes. That sounds amazing. All around to Lorraine's. I can't wait to see what people are going to make and what people are going to try because I think they're all just going to be. And the different varieties. That is why it's different varieties. A bit like mm. difference between your Granny Smith and your Garnel apples. Oh. So it's just yeah. different varieties of raspberries. Yeah, I just found it really bizarre, that's all. When I was buying my raspberries, I thought, well, <laughs> why are them ones so different? It didn't seem to tell me on the packet either. We went for the wonky ones anyway. That looks so colourful, that. Got some fruit. Is it enough fruit? We won't know yet. Till we start pushing it all on. But there's some fruit that I've caught. So I'm going to start to just pat some of this down, that's all. And then what I'm going to do is, as I have the cake and I'm going to stick the fruit on, what I like to do is, so I'll get my half a strawberry that I want to put on, and then the cut side down, I just like to give it just like a gentle dab, just to take a little bit of the extra moisture off, and then stick it on. Just try to take away some of that tiny bit of extra. Push that up there for a second, and then it's my bloomed gelatin. So if you can see, it's gone like it's it's soaked up. It's you've just soaked it all, all up, lot, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's just gonna go like a big mushy ball. So I am going to weigh out the rest of the water because the rest of the water you're gonna want hot so we want to boil it so if you're using just normal flavoring and not the flavored water you can just do it straight from your boiled kettle but i didn't really like the idea of putting flavored water inside my kettle is that on switch it on you've done that you've done function there you go it's beeping at me you put the pan on no put the pan on there you go. So now, when you put the pan on, it's gone. It's on the high speed there now. And when you take it off, okay. Tell you what, leave the pan on. I need to wait. Yeah, and, and wait into a jug. Oh, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? So, 
I just turned it down to minimum at the moment. It's, it's, a, it's a, a thick bottom pan anyway, so just warming that up. <laughs> Karen to the rescue. So I'm going to pour 750 mils just of the flavoured water. So that's, in total, it's going to be like a bottle and a bit. So if you're going to make it, get two bottles, because it's just over the one bottle. And when we was having one of the practice runs, we had an issue with the jelly leaking out at one of the original times we tried it. We said, oh, we're going to have to make some more jelly. But because we had already made it and I didn't realise we had a leak, I took the rest of the flavoured water to bed with me and drank it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you get in trouble. So you have to. You, so you're going to boil this into to boiling point then. This yeah. flavoured water. Just when it's bubbling. So what are you going to talk about now? Why you went? Why you watch? You know what they say about watching the, watching water boil. Hmm. <laughs> People want to watch the water boil, so I put the camera on it. So, I will dry my blueberries. Yes. And we're going to make our blueberries gold. We'll do that whilst we're waiting. Got lots of blueberries in here. Whatever's left from this after the live, I'm going to eat it in bed. I'm going to just take this box of fruit to bed with me. Does your mum know? Yeah, I'll share with that. <laughs> you staying here tonight, aren't you? Yes. You're trying to sleep, Ellie, and all you can hear is munch, munch, munch. To be fair, after the lives, we usually oh, yeah. um, we usually look back on some of the comments. Yeah. I don't get very good signal here, so I don't. I usually don't reply to anything till I get home and turn the laptop on, and I do it on the laptop. But we usually try and watch a bit of it back and look at some of the comments that people have left. Just gonna rub these down a little bit, and then I've got a clean bowl in here that I'm gonna just tip my little blueberries into. Which gold should I use? What would you like? And if you undo the cupboard behind you, this that one, mm -hmm. and then on the bottom shelf, on the top, the bottom shelf. I'm glad you said the bottom shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I should have moved it up, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, that'd be me. <laughs> and then you've got plenty of golds in there. Shall we have some of this deep rich gold? Deep rich gold sounds nice. Deep rich gold. And then all I'm going to do is... Where's the spoon? Inside the box. <laughs> <laughs> did, you see, did you see my eyes looking at you then? <laughs> Thinking, I hope she doesn't take it all into there. <laughs> no. I've actually ordered one of these oh. myself that I've just got today when I've got you were so excited order. when you got your order wasn't you? I use way too much dust because when I try and tip it out I always use too much and then I can never get it back in the yeah. bottle and is that enough? let's see and then I'm just going to toss the bowl around like this so it just gets like a really rustic little coating of the gold just to give it a bit of a pop or something. Look at that. The terrible. We all thought you were saying you're going to dry your, boob your boobies, not your blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a bit more on. Yeah, you want them to pop, don't you? Yeah, I want it to be nice and shiny. Yeah, Nikki loves her little spoons as well. They're great, aren't they? Yeah, I was really excited about mine. I can't wait to use it at home. Put it in my little dust box. Because at home I have a box like this, and then I've got one with my colours in, and then one with my dust in. And then there we go, there we got some nice, pretty gold blueberries that are going to give them a nice proper colour. Gold blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we're boiling over here, which my mum just reminded me of because I was too busy with the dust. <laughs> I've got a nice hot. You just grab a tea towel. So I'm not pouring anything hot on 
to the board. You just watch me all the time because that's what I do. So I'm going to yeah. put something hot on there. It's always a tea towel underneath. Let me put the spoon back so I don't lose it. I'm going to leave it there in case I need it again. Yep. There we go. And then I'm just going to get my boiling flavoured water and I'm just going to pour it over. Just like that. And then just gently stir it till this gelatin all dissolves, which you can see is dissolving pretty fast. Mush up any clumps we have. I was just looking and we're actually doing really well for time. Don't you worry about it. I know, it. I was thinking, oh, I'm running over. And I've just looked. I'm no, you're doing yeah. great. Yeah. Three hours left. <laughs> <laughs> They're all asking, how do you, how, did you have a lie-in this morning? No. <laughs> okay, so that's all of the gelatin that's dissolved in. Look, nice and gone. So then I'm going to tip in. It's up at 10. <laughs> I'm going to tip in 250 grams of just plain normal sugar. You can use normal sugar or caster sugar, it doesn't really matter. But that's 250 grams. And like I said, if you use the flavoured icing sugars, it's still going to taste amazing. It's just not going to be the clear jelly. And obviously for this, because I was putting the fruit inside it, I did want it to be clear. I love the idea of you jazzing up the blueberries. They're all thinking yeah. now about adding little pizzazz to family and friends' desserts. Yeah. You could, you could, I mean, you could you could jazz up the, the strawberries, the raspberries. You could jazz it all up. Yes, yeah. or your really cute little... Um, all of the new little chocolate moulds. Yes. They could all go inside there because chocolate can go inside jelly fine. Yeah. So you could do like little cars or you did the little rainbows. They would be super cool. Or if you was to paint something with cocoa butter, because that's also like cocoa, that's fine. So this now we're going to leave on the side for two hours to come to room temperature. Well, please tell me you've got one. Here's the one I made earlier. I do have one I made earlier. <laughs> I'm really out of really out space, aren't you? <laughs> it's because my mum's usually behind the scenes over here moving things for me. But obviously she's with Trixie today up there, so... And I'm caught on this end of the kitchen. Yeah, so I'm just piling it and piling it. <laughs> so I've got my lovely blueberries. Right. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? Are I you was ready? just taking a second to decide what was next. Can I have the cake out the freezer? You can have the cake out the freezer, my darling. So one out, one in. How's that sound? Yeah. Because this is now going to you don't need the feeder again for this, do you? No. Right, so. so, here we go. So this is the one we brought from home. I put some cling film over the top of it just to obviously keep it clean and protected on the journey. But that is nice and frozen. So we're going to gently, gently, because we don't want to ruin the cling film. Oh, got a runaway cherry. Go back there. Am I in? So this is the part yeah. on the recipe where I've said remember to unfold your cling film yeah. down. And we're just going to gently let that down. And what I have here, I've buried it, but it's here, is I have a little palette knife, just so if we have any parts that have slightly stuck, I can just get the palette knife and gently ease it off the, um, off the, off the ganache film. Yeah. Oh, so that's, so, so you brought that up nice. So this is the six inch cutter that we used. Five and a half. Oh, no, yeah, that one is the six inch, inch but we put the cake okay, to okay. five and a yeah. half inch. Confusing me now. Yes. Right, we're going to undo the clip it. We're all going to hold our breath. <laughs> okay. Oh. We're gently peeling away. Wow. That has come out better than it did at home. At home, we did get a tiny bit of stick in that we fixed with the knife. Look at that. Also, when I made this one at home, I left the top quite rugged looking because I thought it just gave it a more rustic, nice yeah, look. Yeah, absolutely. So I just left it a bit messy on the top on purpose. So let me put this down here because I'm running out of room. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that, they're, they're all going wild. Well, love hearts and lights are coming up here for you, Cicely. They're loving yes. this. So 
The next part is to put the fruit on. So, and this is the part where we've got to be fast and furious. So when it comes out of the freezer, does it start to defrost quite rapidly then? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to start trying to come to room temperature super fast. So you want to work quite quickly, or if you have got a second pair of hands, like if there's someone that's with you or your husband, or like for me, I have my mum, um, that can just give you a little bit of extra hand to get things stuck on. That's great. So they stick on there quite easy, don't they? They do, yeah. yeah. But because it comes to room temperature fast, you just got to be fast. Can you do a few like at the front, front so they can see? That was my tester one. Yeah. <laughs> I was just testing on the my side if it was going to work. Oh, was you holding your breath? Let, I'll let you do them at the sides. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. you holding your breath? Then? Yeah. Because <laughs> the oranges are just like extra juicy. So they're the ones, if, if something's going to fall off, it's going to be your oranges or your kiwis because they've got so much juice inside them. But I have, like I said, I have left these on the side cut to take away a little bit of that. Just dry off that. And then I'm going to save one of my pieces of orange for the top. So I can lean one on the top. I'm just pushing one on. Push the side, no, push the side one. There, that's it. Side one's wanted to come off. Oh, it's great when we've got a bird's eye view from up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we're going to get some kiwi going in here. And it just, I am using a little bit of pressure to push it on. Is it looking good, Trixie? She's having a night to your mum. Oh, no, no, sweetheart. Sweet dreams. She said that she's tired. She wants to go lay down for a bit, but I'm sure she's going to be back down in two seconds. <laughs> so, give it a bit well, of pressure. Well, the loveliness already. It's looking so delicious already. We're going to force some grapes in it. This grape doesn't want to go on. Maybe if I cut this grape in half. Should we try a half grape? Possibly, because if it, uh, it's the, the moisture will help stick it, won't it? Yeah, so we're going to do a half grape. Oh, they've all shouted now night to tricks. So. <laughs> She's been a very good girl. It was a long drive here. And she was so well behaved the whole way. Carol wants some of this now. Carol got some. She had a mouth watering. <laughs> I must admit, it's, it's it's it's. I love anything with fruit. Me, it's, it's fucking gorgeous. I love fresh fruit. Yeah. You still drying your strawberries off a little bit there, are you? Just yeah, I'm just dabbing them on the tissue, which I'm doing with all the fruit really. Just as I'm putting it on, I'm just giving it just a bit of a dab on the cut side. It's also good because you've, you've managed as well, haven't you, to get all the some edible flowers? Yes. I managed to get some edible flowers from Marks and Spencer's. And really reasonably priced. They're um, £1.50 a box. Wow. Which, when you try and order them online and get them shipped, it's coming to more than a tenner. But, and it's actually a really good size box of flowers. Yeah. You get a lot in there. Um, which is perfect, which is great as well, because once we get all of these fruits stuck on, we can just 
chuck some in any empty spots that we have. It just fills the little gaps up, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, this is such a summery cake, isn't it, Simon? Mm, it just great. screams summer at you. And obviously you can make this as full or as empty as you want. If you wanted to just have like a few oranges or lemons oh. and limes or whatever, it's fine. Or if you wanted to really ram them all on. Yeah. If, we're going to make a, if we're going to make it fruity, let's make it fruity. Yeah. Let's not beat around the bush. <laughs> I'm just trying so to see where to I put it. I was watching you on the camera, then you just see where your hand was going then. Yeah, it was because the camera wasn't at the front angle, so I was like, yeah. is there any fruit in the front? <laughs> One of the practice runs that we did, I realised after I decorated it, that I decorated the whole front of the cake, and there was like no fruit on the back of it. <laughs> it just like left the whole back there. Yeah, because when you're looking at it yourself, you can do it, and you forget about the back, whereas you're, you're looking at the back now, but you're having to try and get down to the, what you yeah, call the front. exactly. Which can make it really difficult. They say there's a lot of people there saying it's all screaming at them, eat me, get in my belly. It's this is such a fruity thing, and this is definitely something. That's a good idea. And would you prefer a turntable? Um, possibly, yeah. I will just squeeze past Simon so I can get past you. Look at that, straight past. Look at that. Smaller turntable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't being over. I'm just yeah. thinking. I gave you the tall turntable. Yeah. <laughs> if I pick it up, yes. can you just chuck it under for I me. I was thinking about you, but I was just thinking if you had the tall PME turntable then. What are you trying I'd, to say? I'd, I'd have to get you a stool. I know. I sometimes struggle with my own because I have the same metal one that you yeah. use here, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. I think because your cake's lovely and tall as well. It is and if nice you want to get the fruit on the top, you'll be there sure. on tippy toe. I really like a tall cake. I don't know what it is about short cakes, but I just really like a really big tall cake. So I would much prefer to have like a little six inch cake, but then it'd be really like tall. I think they just look really elegant. So Breda's asking, once, uh, can you leave it in the fridge overnight once decorated? Well, once you've completed it, you said yeah. you can leave it in the fridge overnight, can't you? Because you, you've, mm -hmm. you've made yours yesterday. And you've travelled down with them and then it yeah. looks perfect. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. Um, you just want to be cautious of once we do this part, we're going to want to get the next ganache kit. Or if you're not going to be using a ganache kit, get something round it. Just to hold all this fruit. Because it's such a lovely soft cake, you don't want the fruit to be trying to jump off. Also, you're putting whole raspberries on you being a devil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put the whole raspberries on So then... how long will this cake last with the fruits on? I mean, how long would you could you keep this cake for? I would probably say like four to five days in the fridge, I think. Maybe a little bit less, but... I mean, this is one of those candy cakes, especially with having the mascarpone and the cream, I would say a, a good 48 hours. Yeah, I think it's... Because, um, I mean, if it lasts longer than that, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, I think it's one of them things that you've got to be really cautious about. If it, like, if I was going to be giving this to anybody else, I'd want them to eat it in, like, 24 hours. Straight down. If I'm going to have it for myself, I'm going to risk it a little bit. Are you running around up there, Trixie? Everyone can hear you. <laughs> well, you're, you... Oops, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just dropped the nine. And it wasn't a sachet of gelatin, Gillian. Um, well, you got a, you got a packet, didn't you? you? From your local shop, you can get 50 gram bags, can't you? Yes, yes. My local shop sells them in like 50 gram bags rather than the, it's usually like 12 grams, isn't it? Or seven. Yeah. So you can, you, I mean, you, you can, if you get the bags, you can, sometimes you can get the packs where they've got like six or seven little sachets in, you could get those, but if you can get any, uh, the big bags of powdered gelatin, and said it wouldn't last four days in the fridge, it would be gone in one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we're not telling her off, Joe, we? we're just laughing, I just thought, I because I kept thinking, it, it reminded me at home, I could just hear these feet going up and down, and I realised it was Trixie. She never, ever, <laughs> ever stops running, it's constant. 
all day until she falls to sleep. Wow, you're a gym bunny, aren't you? Hey, I always say that she's gonna be, she's gonna be a gymnast. <laughs> Right, I need to speed up a little bit. Do you like watching your mummy do that? Yeah. No, she's going up. How can she go shy after this long? <laughs> I think she's getting tired. She is only three. She's she's a big girl for three. She she's is, a lovely, well, got lovely she's tall legs, hasn't she? Next week. I'm gonna speed up a little bit because <laughs> I don't want him to fall off. Charlie Coulson struggles with random. Her, the fruit would be symmetrical. And I do, to be fair. I try and have it symmetrical, but because I'm here, um, I am in a little bit more of a rush because it's warm in here. Um, I'm just chucking it on anyway. <laughs> You're more conscious of the frosting starting to, yeah. to uh, go soft, aren't you? Yeah, that's my only worry. It is warm in here. Mm-hmm. And I can open the door a bit more now. We had the, um, I don't know what we had before, we had, it was like an army going past, wasn't it? With the cars and everything going mm. past. There we go. Get some air in here for you. <laughs> Thank you. Now we can hear the birdies going to sleep now, Trixie. They're very loud birdies <laughs> here, aren't they? <laughs> And don't forget your gold berries as well. Yeah. That's what um, Paul said, Bold Baker Paul. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. Where did I even put them? Oh, I think they're there. I lost them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to chuck some fruit on the top. And the fruit that I'm putting on the top, I am going to leave the stalks on because they're going to be peeking out of the jelly. So it doesn't really matter as much on the top. We're going to have some lovely strawberries just jammed in the top. They look a little bit symmetrical, but we're going to put more things on. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think I'm the only one worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that feeling? Yeah. I'm just saying, throw it on. Throw it on. And then we're going to chuck on some of these kiwis. And you want to make sure that everything that you're putting on is stuck to the frosting. Don't like pile things on top of each other because once the jelly comes, it's still just flow if it's not attached properly. And then I'm gonna chuck in some cherries that look really beautiful because they've still got stalks on them. Yeah, don't worry, uh, Dale. You're going to put some, you're going to put some flowers in in a minute, aren't you? Yes. Why don't you put your gold berries on? I got my gold berries, so we're going to just push some gold berries in, and I'm going to put them so they've got the spiky sort of side out. Do you know what I mean? Like the the little starry bit on, the, just so yeah. you can tell it's a blueberry. Like I don't want people to not know what the gold ball thing is on it. Oh wow, that is looking so good. Okay. And then we're gonna push some more in. I'm just just putting them wherever I've got a nice size gap for them. So Denise, um Cicely made them goals. You put the blueberries in a bowl and then put uh, a couple of little, uh, little, uh, little uh, wonder dust spoons of the uh, deep gold and then just shook the bowl around so it covered them. Yeah. And, and it, it works the same way with Maltesers if you're doing yeah. a chocolate themed cake. Just toss them in some gold and roll them around. And it'd do with, it, it'd do with any fruit, wouldn't it? It'd do it with the yeah. strawberries, the raspberries. It's a good way of coating them all yeah. in just one go. Just who wants to faff around and like dust each berry? <laughs> 
I just think it's a much more convenient way to do it. So we're getting there guys. I love that because they're gold, but you can still see, like you said, the little star bit. You can still yeah. see, see it's a blue because you can just see the blue peeking out. Yeah. Because that's the thing is, without the blue bit peeking out, with like the star part. People would just think they were, they were a chocolate ball. They wouldn't realise it was yeah. fruit, would they? No. I'm just poke some more in here and there. I'm going to stab some raspberries here and there on the top. And I'm fighting against my melting frosting. Well, Jill Cook's watching you on YouTube. It's looking fab on the big screen. It'd be absolutely great. Thank Elaine you. said it looks stunning. Thank you. It looks yeah. absolutely delicious. It's coming together. It's starting to make sense. Yes. Does it make more sense now? It You're watching does. me make it. Now I'm watching you make it, dear. It really does. I'm not very good at explaining things. Oh, well, we had a laugh, so, didn't we? We did. So here are my little edible flowers, which I think are stunning. And we're just going to start stabbing these anywhere and anywhere. It doesn't particularly matter. So you've got these from Marks and Spencers? Yeah, so they're £1.50 a box. They get fresh deliveries every day. But I don't think they get many every day. So if you do want these, I would suggest getting down to your Marks and Spencers for like opening time. Because I think we only get about 10 boxes in. Wow. So, yeah. But the first time we got them, they had one. on. No, they had run out. Then the next time they had like one. And then the next time they had three. So I just bought all three boxes. Because I was like, then I'm going to be using them yesterday for the one in the fridge and then one's for today I'll use them up but they're just so pretty Trixie has ate multiple when I was decorating the cake yesterday and she said they tasted okay they're all saying you could wear this on your hat on your head like it's a Carmen Miranda hat they're all saying yeah. <laughs> so how long do the flowers last? Uh, not they don't have a long shelf life um maybe like two days three days yeah. at a push then they start to wilt um i bought these yesterday morning they're still okay but i think by tomorrow they're probably going to be a bit iffy Do you have to wash these flowers before use, or can you use them straight from the, the pot? You can use them straight from the pot. They're like pre-washed. And whereabouts yeah. in Marks and Spencers will you find these? On the salad section. Next to the croutons. <laughs> Next to the croutons. Next to the croutons, ladies and gentlemen. Because wow. <laughs> they also have, you know, the little micro greens, are they called? Where they're like... They look like little grass sprigs oh, yes. that you can put on your salads. They also sell them next to them, if anyone's after any microgreens. Yep, so they, because they, they say, whereabouts would you find them? You'd find them next to the croutons on the salad section. Not where you would think they're supposed <laughs> to be. We had to ask a member of staff to help us find them, which was really lovely because the member of staff that we asked turned out to not even be on shift. She was doing a shopping and she was very nice and took us to where they were. And yes, Angie, you can eat the, eat the whole bit of that flower, can't you? Even the green bit. Yeah, look. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, micro herbs, is it? And me just saying the micro herbs. Yeah, what did I call them? Greens. Oh, yeah, and, that, and that's what I was talking about. They don't taste too bad by themselves, to be honest. Do you want to try one? Go on. Oh, I'll, I'll take a I'll take a they, purple one. I'll be brave. They don't actually taste of that much. They're a little. They've got like a little bit of a peppery taste. But you've got to imagine on your slice of cake. I don't think you would taste it. Oh, you know what? I might get them and put them on my salad. <laughs> They're nice, aren't they? They've just oh. got, they just got a bit of a peppery after time. Have one, Simon. Oh, Simon, they nice. Pass a flower around. Yeah. Have a flower, Simon. I, I haven't. Don't go in your garden, ladies. Mm -hmm. Don't just go and pick them out of your garden. 
Oh, they're, they're tasty. Yeah. Yeah, they're just... Yeah, I think I don't think they would taste of pretty much anything. Really. I think if I get on some though, I'll do a salad. I'm gonna put some of my daughter's salad. She's gonna think I've lost the plot. They're nice, those. Yeah, and they're very pretty. So they're just for one pound fifty. They're just a brilliant addition, aren't they? You get a and lot in that tub. There is a you, lot. There, there, is, there is a lot, a lot. in that tub. There really is. Because they're such tiny little flowers, they do really go far. Because I'm literally just stabbing them everywhere at this point. You've really done overload on there, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, we need to get the ganache kit round, I think. Yes. We're going to have to get this ganache Look kit round. Look at that. How good is that? So, oh, the box. <laughs> the one right down there. <laughs> One of the gold, as one of the gold um, blueberries fell off. Someone was saying one of the gold blueberries fell off. What? I don't know. No, somebody one, says. One did fall off a minute ago and I oh, did you, just oh, put one back on, fine. so that's probably the one that they're talking about. So we're going to get this and we're going to wrap it round. Okay. And then I used a cake tin to go round mine, but my cake tin is in the fridge going round the other one that I made. So we're not going to. Um, hmm? Get one out of mine. I'll get one out of the Have you got the clip ones? Oh no! I used that a spring, spring loaded. I them. just used a spring loaded one as like a ring. Okay. We can just rub it off that one. I'm not, I'm not touching anything. <laughs> I'm giving it. Do it over here a second. <laughs> just. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking no spring tin off. There you go. So yeah, that's the first time I've, already, I've eaten the flower dinners. It was actually very, it was quite tasty. So this is what I used, a spring-loaded tin, um, this is an 8 inch, but um, without the bottom of it. So put this round, and then I also used one of the foams, because I don't want too much of like a thick jelly layer. Okay. And then we're just going to let this out a tiny bit. Push that back in, and then we're going to... This has got to go into the freezer, or not the freezer, the fridge, for 10 minutes to get this fruit nice and firm. Now on your recipe you've said 30 minutes. I did say 30 minutes, but we're going to put it in the freezer, freezer. For, 10, we're put it in the freezer for 10 because yeah. obviously we're on a little bit more of a time schedule yeah, here than we would be at home. At home, give it a good half an hour, just go for a cup of tea and just leave it to chill. We're not going to do that. <laughs> We're just going to give it 10 minutes and go for it. Just take that one out. Yeah, just pull the other one out, that's fine. There we go, shut the door on that one, so that's it. Hey, musical cakes in the Musical freezer. cakes, here we go, back with this one. There we go. So what are you going to do now then? <laughs> so you're going to do the tip. Well, oh, the, the, yeah. well, if the rain was sang to last night, but you know we're here, so we might as well sing till the rain again. Yes. What do you think? Yeah, so let's yes. do that. <laughs> Are you ready? You I'm not going, ready. You know, <clears throat> oh, he's got to, sorry. He's got to now have a drink to lubricate his vocal cords, Please as know. Cicely's doing as well. Which is my leftover <laughs> lemon and lime water. Are you sure? You, so la, that. La, 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 la. <laughs> it's actually uh, that turntable. It's actually a slate lazy Susan, believe it or not. It's not an actual turntable. It's a slate lazy Susan, and we just use it as a turntable. We use it to show like the chocolate on and that. And uh, if we've done meringues, it's just a lovely mm. display table. But I didn't want to nice. get the really high turntable out for Sister because she wanted to decorate the top of the cake. And, and I thought, it would have been up here, and then the cake <laughs> would have been up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to get a stool out for yeah. you. 
So are you ready for... Whose birthday is it? It's Lorraine. Lorraine. Just Lorraine. Lorraine. Right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lorraine and Leslie. Leslie. Happy birthday to you. You snuck that one Yay. in the last minute. Well, Leslie just well, snuck it into me. There, so <laughs> is she flipping? Happy birthday, Lorraine and Leslie. Is Leslie's a real birthday? I hope so. And as um, Carol just said, have we got? Oh, it was Paul's last month. Right, we'll do that again in a moment. Have we got any questions about so far on how Sisla's been doing? Uh, any questions you want to yeah. ask her on any any point of the cake that you want to go over? If I've confused any of you at any point, feel free to tell me and then I'll just re-explain. Yeah, is there anything that you'd like her to, to go over again? It's, it's absolutely fine. We, we have a, a bit of a question time there. Yeah. And it was Paul's birthday last month, so we can't forget Paul. So a quick happy birthday for Paul. Are you ready, Chipsy? What? Have we done happy birthday, Paul, last month then? No, I think we forgot. Paul, I'm just looking at, so I've got happy birthday. I'm just looking at Maya. Oh, Leslie, well done you. She's 54 today. Happy birthday for today and for Lorena. There's lots of love hearts coming up. Um, there's no questions. Oh, that's good then. As of yet. Happy, happy belated birthday, Paul. Absolutely. I must have explained really well then. Oh, and I've got to say hello to the YouTubers. Hello, YouTubers. Simon, you have one job. Is that the <laughs> finger pressing button thing? So I will just we, we can quickly uh, go we can quickly go through uh, the recipe. So uh, Cicely's used two six-inch sponge cakes, which each sponge cake is 150 grams of self flour, 150 grams of sugar and crumbs, natural flavoured velvet vanilla and 150 grams of uh, margarine and three eggs and you did that twice didn't you yes so I you've did. used two full six inch cakes mm -hmm. in yours yeah and then you went through your cheesecake frosting mm -hmm. do, you to, do you want to read it out to them yes <laughs> so it was 405 grams of mascarpone cheese and we let that sit out for about 10 20 minutes just to soften slightly, mix that so it was nice and smooth, and then we add 240 grams of unsweetened yogurt, and then if it's got the water stuff on the top, just drain that off. Um, and then we mixed in the velvet vanilla icing sugar. We did 15 grams of gelatin and 50 ml of cold water and left that to bloom. And once that had bloomed, we microwaved it to bring it back to a liquid form. Um, we then added some of the mixture into the gelatin bowl and whisked it really fast and then put it all into the big bowl and mixed it all in and then we added 275 grams of double cream which I had half whipped and then that was the frosting recipe. So just a quick question here of Karen Schnell. Mm -hmm. Could you do the upside down method with the ganaching kit and the cheesecake mixture or do you need the cling film? You need the cling film to stop the, once you get to the jelly layer, if you haven't got it so it's suctioned onto the cling film, the whole cake, which has happened to us a couple of times, will just lift off the bottom and just float and just be bobbing around in the jelly in the fridge. And yeah, it's, it's, it's very upsetting when you've spent that long and you've been working that hard on the cake to get right to the end and find out it's bobbed up and set wrong. So you want to have that, uh, the bare bottom of the cake onto the cling film, just to give it that suction. Yeah, that, that's what you said before. Yeah, absolutely agree mm -hmm. with that. Because then, like you said... But we you can say, move it afterwards. Yeah, you're going to move it to, you said you can move it to a, a, a fresh, uh, a fresh mm -hmm. cake stand or... Or a, a nice a, board like this. Absolutely. You can just move it onto whatever you wanted. So what but did yeah. you do, and then, then what did you do after you made your frosting? You put your cake? <laughs> I put the cake. <laughs> I trimmed down the six inch cake to five and a half inches and we laid it up and put the cream in the middle and around the outside of it in the ganache kit and then into the freezer for three hours at least. Or if you leave it overnight, that's fine too, depending on, you know, when you plan to make it. And then we made the jelly. Um, which is 
65 grams of powdered gelatin mixed with 375 milliliters or grams because it's the same thing of the flavored water just cold and left that to bloom for about 10 minutes and then boiled 750 mils of the flavored water to make it nice and hot and then we just poured it on the top stirred it until the gelatin melted and then added 250 grams of normal sugar or caster sugar whichever one you want to use and stirred that till it dissolved and um, leave that out on the sideboard for um, two hours for it to come to room temperature and then what did we do then? Then you Karen? took your oh, it's cake. a mouthful, you, isn't it? Then you took your cake out of the freezer because yes. three hours had passed. Yeah, three hours had passed. Just, yeah. You you gently took your mm -hmm. film ganache film away from the cake yeah. and then proceeded to mm -hmm. put on your fruit. Yes, we chopped the fruit. We tried to dry it a little bit. Stuck it on as fast as we could. Put the flowers on and the berries. Put the next ganache kit on it. Back in the fridge for ten minutes which ideally half an hour, give yourself some time to have a cup of tea and a sit down for half an hour. We're going to do it for 10 minutes and just risk it. Well, we've put ours in the freezer, so we're, we're just hoping. So, uh, Bolt Baker Paul's asking, I wonder if you could do different translucent coloured jelly on the outside, like a sunset ballet, and each colour set a bit at a time. Yeah, you could 100% do that, and that would look amazing. If you do make that poll, I would love to see it. That, that's amazing. Which, and that is a lot of patience, isn't it? That is a lot of patience, but yeah. Um, I this jelly sets quite fast. Um, you want to leave it for like three hours. I left it overnight, um, but that's just because I mainly do everything at night when Trix is in bed, yeah, and then unwrap it in the morning. Um, but I, how long would you say, Mum, for it to form enough to put a next layer on? Probably about, yeah, probably about an hour, hour and a half yeah. for it to set enough to be able to pour over another layer without gently. It, without it sinking yeah. into each colour. That would absolutely look lovely, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. If you've got the patience to do it, I'd love to see it. I don't really have the patience for that. But it's the same, it's the same concept really as the island cakes. Yes. When people do, because that's, it would be the same technique, but it would be a frosted cake with ganache to seal it or your buttercream, whatever. And then you put the jelly on, but then you would dye the jelly slightly blue, and then you'd maybe put fish in it, or I've seen all different types yes. of lovely ones. So it's pretty much the same concept, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. Shall we pull it out and risk it? Have we had 10 minutes yet? Yes. Yeah, we've got, we've yes. got nine minutes yet. <laughs> it's been in for nine minutes. Yeah. Come on. Let's just oh, risk it for a sure? chocolate biscuit. <laughs> Yeah, do we have a ladle by chance? You might it doesn't matter if you do. Probably the jug might be better. I just had a jug with water in it. Yeah, well, it feels nice and cold, that anyway. I thought you pulled out the wrong one, maybe it frosted. I thought that was the jelly one. So, are you ready, guys? If it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong now. It's not so, going to go wrong. No. So what I'm going to do is, it's personal preference what you want to do. I am going to make a little cling film wrap around mine. Just to, that little bit of extra security because if you're going to spring a leak, you're going to spring a leak now. And all of your hard work will be ruined. Will be all of your work top. Which has happened more than once to me. We've figured it now, but it has happened and it is really upsetting. And you're just talking from experience here, aren't you, Pat? Yeah. We, ha we have had tears. <laughs> I, emailed, I emailed the new lady, what's the name? India? Is it? India, yeah. Is it India? No, Kerry. Oh, is it Kerry? Kerry the message. They're both, they're both new. Yeah, Kerry messaged me and she was like, oh, do you know what you're doing? I said, this is my idea. I'll send the pictures over later on this week if it works. Uh, safe to say, um, it took me like two weeks to get the emailed pictures over. I didn't email the pictures over till this week because we had lots and lots of trial and errors. And I did all the trial and errors for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done all the troubleshooting as well. Yes, I did it all for you guys. Right, so this is a jelly that I made a few hours ago and left on the side. 
Which so it's gone down to lovely room temperature now. Yeah, so this is all room temperature and it looks very pretty, I think. So that one's still red hot that we started. I am going to I used just like a late like a soup ladle at home. But again, just use whatever you've got on hand. It doesn't have to be exactly what I've used. I've just used what was convenient for me in my kitchen. And I'm just going to, we're going to gently pour it from the top. Because we don't want to accidentally knock off any berries. So if we do it gently from the top. And then it's going to gently pour down the sides. Everyone's holding their breath in the kitchen. <laughs> Sorry, I could hear it hitting the no, bottom. I, it, there's nothing coming out. I could hear it trickling down the sides, and I thought, is that trickling down the sides, or is that pouring out my bottom? So that's my jelly in. So let's move this out the way. Oops. Sorry, Karen. It's all right. So, dum dum dum. <laughs> this is how many hours is this? How long did you put it in the fridge? Was it two hours? <sighs> this is three hours later. It, it is. It's three. It, it's <laughs> placed back in the fridge for another three hours. So three hours have passed in a flash. Yeah. And here we have one ready for unveiling. Everyone was holding their breath now for you, sister, when you were pouring that in there. Yes. So look at this one now. So you're going to gently peel this cling film away, aren't you? Yeah. So we have got a little bit that's come on the outside, which is fine because it's just set fine, look. So I've got some that's leaked, but it's not enough that's leaked for it to actually cause an issue. There's just been a little bit. So are we ready? So drum roll, please. Are we ready for drum roll? There we go. Okay. And we're going to very... And you do this very carefully. Nice and gently. Nice and gently. The love hearts are absolutely shooting up here for you. And we're going to... Look away. at wow. that. Wow. How super <laughs> does that look? Absolutely <laughs> amazing. That looks great. <laughs> And I know Carol's watching and while she's waiting for she says amazing. She loves it. So I've got this really pretty board that Karen gave me just before the um, lie, just for transferring it to. This is lovely and stable. Are you ready? Yeah, if I pick this up, can you just grab the cling film? There we go. <laughs> Off and on. So you do need to have somebody in there with another pair of hands when you transfer it. Yeah, you, can't, you, 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 could, you could manage by yourself. But. How good is that? Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Cicely, you are amazing. That is super. Stunningly beautiful. That's a beauty. People are loving it. They're saying awesome. It's fab. Wow, wow, wow. Fantastic job, love. Bold Baker Paul says to you and stunning Marie Wilson Cicely it's amazing well done do you. they want to see it cut do you want to see a slice would you know what it'd look superb for our photographs wouldn't it that's what I'm thinking shall we what not cut no <laughs> Sam is going can you play it back together <laughs> yeah 
Come on, guys, let's hack off a slice. Uh, like Dinaz, uh, Dinaz says, it's breathtaking, it's a showstopper. And imagine doing that and having that on your dinner table. You bring that out as dessert and watching people's jaws drop open when they realise that, how have you got that fruit? It's jelly. How, how have you done that? You can do it it's cake, well. it's yes. juice cake, it's jelly, it's fruit. It's, I just think it's summer. And Karen says, that's worthy of a bake-off showstopper. So, well done. It's amazing. So, yes, yes, Ooh. yes. What's what? Interesting. Come have a look. Who, who was it that mentioned the kiwi? Can you see just there? Oh. I don't know if we'll be able to pick that up on the camera because someone said about the kiwi. Yes. We don't have an issue. It's fine. No, it's not. But, um, but it's interesting to show people if they're going to make it themselves. Where did it just go? Maybe, here. Maybe don't use kiwi. Can you see that here it's... Can we look on this side camera? Yeah, we are, yeah. That, is that yeah. side camera? Um, I don't know if you can see, but just there, there's like a little tiny, tiny liquid bubble around that piece of kiwi, which is fine because it won't ruin anything, but that's good to know that it's kiwi good. is not a jelly fan. It's not. Apparently kiwi, pineapple, and there's yeah. another one. It's something to do with the enzymes that break yeah. down the something in the, in the gelatin. I didn't realise that, <laughs> and that's just really... Eating quick. I don't really, I don't have an issue with it, but um, it is good to know, because I didn't know that. Let me uh, I've, uh, I've got to do a live in the morning to cut it with Terry in India. Oh, have you? Is that what Carol said? <laughs> Carol said. Yeah, do a live in the morning to cut it okay. with Terry. So I, I, I am on yeah. live, I'm on live tomorrow at 11.30, so I can just come on and I'll, the first thing I'll do is, we'll cut this cake yeah. at 11.30. Okay, okay. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> so we'll leave that in the fridge chilling overnight. Mm -hmm. So and then we can bring that out tomorrow, and we can cut that tomorrow and uh, do a live in India, and Terry can film it. Mm. We don't, so we're not going to cut it now. No. No. Okay. We are going to cut it on the live tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So please tune in tomorrow at. 11.30 yeah. and uh, I will cut it for you. The first job I will do of the day is I will cut it. Mm. Could we use apples do you think? Um, if you was to like dip, soak them in like lemon juice first because yeah. I know lemon juice stops the browning doesn't it? Yeah. So possibly if you did that I'm, I'm not too sure. Again, it's also it's 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 also googling as well. You could always Google what fruits mm -hmm. are okay to do with do with jelly and gelatin mm -hmm. to make sure that there's no enzymes in that certain fruit to for not the jelly not to set. But yeah. that has set beautifully. Just that one little part that you showed there, but that looks absolutely yeah. stunning. And it's amazing, Jacqueline Penfold. It's amazing. Thank you, Cicely, for a yummy demo, and thanks to Karen and Simon as well. Uh, Dinaz is just blown away. It's just <laughs> fabulous. Well, I'm glad you're all happy with it. Uh, yeah, and Janie, Janie Stott said, I would not like to cut this. She would just like to gaze at it for a week. Mm. <laughs> and everyone has said, uh, fantastic live. Thank you. And Cicely, we can't wait to have you back in the kitchen again. Yeah. You've gave us some really good ideas. Mm. And I'm sure you've given yourself a few in the car on the way down that your, your yeah. brain is ticking over on overtime now, yeah. isn't it? Every time I go home, I'm always trying to think of something else different. Well, that's... Like, what can I do that's that going to That is cool. different. <laughs> and that is an absolute piece of art. It's beautiful. Uh, and yeah. it's so good to grace any table that... It looks like it's just come out of some really, really expensive mm. patisserie. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a great way of testing the ganache kit as well, because who would yeah. have thought? <laughs> yeah absolutely great and you've did your ganache kit another use for the ganache yeah. kit it's not just for buttercream swiss brown buttercream and chocolate it's for jelly yeah as well <laughs> yeah and they're all saying thank you for sharing your live it's an amazing jelly cake it's really really good thank so you. thank you everyone for joining us is there any final little questions that you'd like to ask cicely while she's here while we've got up anything you'd like to ask has Trixie gone to bed now? Would Trixie like to come and say goodbye to everybody? Oh, she's laying she's down old. at the top of the stairs. I don't blame you. It's, 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 even the birdies are going to bed now, aren't they? Mm. So could we do it without the without the liner? Um, someone's asking, could you do it without the biscuit liner? This isn't a biscuit liner, Jill. This is the uh, this was the Ganache uh, Bridges room Bridges. 
cake room ganashing kit. It wasn't the biscuit line one. It, this one is the large one. Is this is the seven inch, the nine inch one you've got there. Yeah. Oh, it's the nine inch one. You did a six inch cake, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Originally. Yeah. I did a six inch cake, um, and then this was the the nine inch liner in an eight inch tin. But I did use the foam insert as well, yeah. just to take it down that tiny bit more. As you said, the jelly's just over there, and it's just even, it's not squashing the flowers or the fruit, it's just holding it all into place, isn't it? Mm hmm. So they all say thank you. Yes, yeah, so we are gonna, we are cutting it tomorrow. Oh, there we go. I've just, I've just screamed on Danny because the feed was going that fast there. <laughs> so I am, uh, oh, we're going to do it at 9.30 in the morning, Cicely. Oh, so that you be before we leave. You, no, so you're, you are cutting it, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so it's going to be live at 9.30 with Terry. And then Cicely, you can cut it live on air for all the lovely ladies and gentlemen to see a lovely slice of this mm. cake after we photographed it. So... Now, everyone's going to see you again in the morning at 9.30. Yes. So you know now, so then you can put your makeup on and everything else. Because you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we frightened you before when we said you're suddenly doing a live. You went, <gasps> I know. <laughs> so that's great. So that's um, great, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd like to join us again at 9.30 in the morning with Cicely, she's going to cut this live on air back. and we're going to be filming it. <laughs> great, okay. So, done. so I'll see you yeah. at 9.30 with Cicely tomorrow morning. Thank you all for joining us. Bye.